want to see you I want to see you promote stuff that's good but this is an import man what about the Dometic what about the Dan Foss compressor what are you talking about man you gonna get me in this when you got the Dometic you got the Dan Foss compressor for those of you that are new to the channel my name is Jamie and I've been living the van life bus life for 10 years my anniversary was January 1st 2022 I have used both a cooler ongoing when I first started out and also these little uh, low draw compressor refrigerators like the one we're about to take a look at. I've been through a total of five different refrigerators, different brands, sizes. And so I've gotten to see what the weak points are in them and the strong points are. And I'm gonna take the benefit of all that knowledge and share it with you right now. In fact, if I do my job, you watching this channel because you're, you're watching this video because you're considering getting a refrigerator or you're kind of weighing the differences should I get a fridge or should I get a cooler if I do my job in this in this video by the time it's over it'll be a no-brainer and you'll pull the trigger on this fridge right now and I say that because I've done the research this isn't a, a situation where I just turn the camera on and said hey let's just talk about this refrigerator and anything that comes to mind is what we'll say Mm, I've done the research and the background on this before I took this on to review and the the company here set power has figured it out on how to make it a no-brainer that this is the fridge to get whether it's the 45 quarter or the 60 quart I mean, first of all you got a little penguin on the on the imaging how can you go wrong with that I mean that should seal the deal right there but let's go ahead and do an unboxing and let's get through the merits of this fridge having a fridge over a cooler and why this one is so amazing make sure when you get this at your home that you let it sit for a day before you fire it up because there's fluids in it that have to settle and we don't know how it was shipped and what angles and stuff it might have been set on so make sure it's just upright for a day before we fire it up now check this out it already looks strong durable scratch and dent resistant being plastic rather than metal what i'm seeing right off the bat is you've got your display over here on one side and the vents for it are on the same side as, as the display why that's important is when you if you put this in some place in your rig and you make a little cubby hole for it you're gonna push this down inside that cubby hole perhaps, maybe even put it on some sliders or whatever, but you want the compressor to be able to breathe and that's what these vents are for. And they designed it in such a way that the display is on the same side as the vents and you just wanna make wherever you put this thing where it can breathe, where it's out in the open on the compressor side. And they put some things in your favor by putting the display on the same side as the vents. So I like that immediately. You've got outlets for both uh, 12 and 24 volt. Some folks are running 24 volt systems these days in their vehicles. And so this will accommodate it without having to step down from the 24 volts. It'll take it right in. And the way these cords work on, on this uh, refrigerator is you have one outlet. And depending on whether you're going to wire it into your rig or a house, you just put this cord in either way. And then this either goes into your 12 volt. I'm gonna cut this and I would recommend either you or if you know somebody that's qualified to work with electrical, cut this and wire it straight into your fuse block with a 15 amp fuse. And I say a 15 amp fuse because that's what they've used over here on the unit itself. But we're gonna find out how many amps this thing's pulling. It's gonna run on a third cycle, which means a third of the day it's gonna run. We'll see how many amps that is when it's cycling on, and then we'll uh, get an idea of how many amps it's gonna pull over the course of the day, so you'll know how much battery you're gonna need, how much solar you're gonna need effectively. But you got the 12 volt, and then if you wanna use 110, we plug it into here. Plug this into here right here. Plug it into the wall. So let's say you're out living the van life, digging it, everything's going groovy, but you decide that you wanna check into a hotel for a couple of days, but you don't wanna get hit with that mini bar bill when you go to check out. You could take this fridge right from your rig into the hotel room, 
plug it into 110, have all your goodies and perishables stay cool, and you've just gone from 12 volt in your rig to 110 in the hotel, no mini bar bill, bada boom, bada bing. Let me show you the inside of this thing. I really like the way they did it. You get a basket and you get a divider so you can set the divider in and make a dual zone. Or you can pull it out and make the whole thing one temperature. Let's just say you want to make the whole thing a fridge. I've got two of mine are just set to fridge. Or if you want the whole thing to be a freezer, you just want to put meats and, uh, and vegetables or whatever, fruits for your smoothies in here, make the whole thing a, a freezer, you could do that too. So it's giving you the flexibility to have it be whatever you want it to be. We also get a drain plug. Not all bridges come with a drain plug. Because over time you'll uh, get frost and you'll want to stop, pull everything out and you know, I probably do mine every two, three months where I just stop, pull everything out and you can drain the water, makes it a lot easier. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see how much power it draws and see how fast it takes to cool down and see if it'll run on a little miniature power station. In our first test, we're gonna use a little Rock Pals power station. And this would be something that you would use if say you aren't maybe a full time traveler, but you're gonna go out for several days and you don't wanna plug this into your cigarette lighter in your car. Now you could use that cigarette lighter if you want. There's a low voltage cutoff on this. Your low voltage cutoff with three settings, low, medium, and high that you can use to make sure that it doesn't leave your battery where you, it won't start if you're in a car or a uh, boat situation. Go ahead and plug this in, and we're gonna see if this little baby will run it. I think it's going to. 80 degrees, 80 degrees. We have max and eco mode. If we wanna cool it really fast, we can use max. Eco's gonna cool it a little bit slower, but use less power. I just felt the, hear that? Okay, so it's running using 40 watts, now it's using 32 watts, 34 watts. Let's go ahead and put an amp meter on here and see how much this is pulling. Okay, now it's pulling 60 watts, which is what it's rated to pull. Get yourself a little meter that does DC, AC, DC. We're gonna set it to 40 amps, which means it's zero to 40 amps is the range it's gonna look for. That's how that works. And then I'm gonna clamp this on. So if we look here, we see that we're pulling five amps when it's under the heaviest load to cool down the fridge. What this tells us here is call that five amps. That means when you're under load for a third of the day, you're gonna be pulling five amps an hour. Well, a third of the day is eight hours. So we multiply eight hours by five amps and we get 40 amp hours a day, roughly, that this is gonna use. Now, it's also gonna depend on if this is out in the sun, we really don't want it in a position where it's out in the sun. Maybe when you're looking to build your rig out, you've got the fridge in such a way that when you slide your door open, it's right there where the sun's gonna hit it. If you, if you wanna do that and you have no choice but to do that, it's okay, just wrap it with some reflectics and some kind of, you can put blankets around it, you know, any kind of insulation, the more insulation, the better, and the more uh, contents you have in here, the better it's gonna keep cold. So you wanna keep it full, even if you use some gel packs or something, and wrap it, especially if it's gonna be in the sun. But we don't wanna wrap these vents. These vents have to breathe, or it's gonna shorten the life of the unit. Always remember that. Uh, insulate it, keep these vents open where they can breathe, and you're gonna be in good shape. Now let's just see how long it takes to cool this thing down. Looking at the watch, it's now 4.13. 
We just hit our mark here. This is lower because I swapped the zones at first and I was trying to make this the cool zone. But the left side is the one, if you're gonna make one a freezer and one a fridge, the left zone, the back part, is the one that is gonna be the freezer for you if you're using the partition. And so that's why this number's off. It would, it, when it normalizes, it'll be 38. But we see we're pulling about four amps. It's still running the compressor. It'll kick off eventually. Oh, there we go. So we plugged it in and we saw that we could run it on a little power station, which means that a cigarette lighter in a vehicle would be no problem. And certainly solar, like what I'm under here, would be no problem at all. It took a little over an hour to cool it off with nothing in it from 80 degrees. Uh, that might be important if you're heading out someplace on a road trip and you need it to cool off fast. But us, you know, out here in the traveling lifestyle, we're probably gonna cool it down once and that's pretty much gonna be the end of it. But we saw that, it, that it's got a, a robust compressor and that it cools down fast, so that's cool. Let's talk, to, <laughs> no pun intended. Let's talk some numbers. With Set Power's latest release, we've got the RV45D and the RV60D, which we've got a promo code for about $50 off. There'll be a link down in the description for. Let's talk about the differences between this and an ice chest. In case you're looking at this and thinking, eh, do I get an ice chest or do I go ahead and pull the trigger on a mobile refrigerator? I, that's what I did for a year when I first started out in a little van. I had an ice chest. So you've got the cost of the ice chest. Right now the Yetis are running about $300 for a high-end ice chest where the ice is going to last for potentially several days and all the way down to something you might pick up at the closest place to you that would sell ice chests, little plastic ice chests. Eh, you're looking at maybe 85 bucks for something. They come in three day, five day, and then you know, denoting by how long the ice is typically expected to last. And then uh, you know, the Yetis and the Yeti knockoffs. So let's say you were to go that route instead. Less out of pocket right up front for the ice chest. Let's say you get one that's about a hundred bucks and now you're putting uh, ice in for your perishables. What's gonna happen, I did this, I, I saw how it played out, is you're gonna use up at least half of your space in ice, sometimes a lot more than that. Especially if you're up in the mountains and ice is quite a drive away, you're gonna wanna get as much ice as possible in your cooler and then you're gonna shove your perishables around, your lunch meat, if you get some uh, chicken breast, uh, what other, whatever other meat you might get, you shove them in around the ice. It's not the same temperature as the ice going in, so it's gonna kind of normalize to, to melt the ice a little bit to get, get it all the same temperature, so you're gonna instantly get some water in there and try as you might with uh, Ziploc bags, even the heavy freezer bags. Every once in a while, you're, uh, your chicken is gonna get loose and leak out and you're gonna have chicken juice in the entire cooler. It's just gonna, it happened several times uh, for me. It's just gonna happen uh, regardless of the precautions you take. So you gotta mess with that. You're gonna be pulling the whole thing out to drain it, wipe everything down. Heaven forbid you try to take a sip off of a drink that's got that chicken juice on the top of it. It's just absolutely nasty. But let's say, hey, I don't eat chicken. It's no big deal. All right, let's put that aside for, for, uh, for it. You still have to deal with the, the ice, which is going to cost you about a dollar a day, and the mess, draining it and so forth. So you've got the upfront cost of the cooler and then a dollar a day in perpetuity to keep your stuff cold rather than you get yourself a, a, a refrigerator like this, a mobile refrigerator like this, and you're out of pocket the one time, you choose your way to power it, we've talked about those ways, and by the time you reach the cost of what you paid for this, you've now caught up and you're in the money. So for instance, this one, we'll just talk about the, the math on this, it comes in at the website at $439. With the promo code that I'm gonna give you in the link below, you're gonna get about $50 off of that. So you subtract that. Free shipping from the website, so you don't have to worry about the shipping cost. They're gonna, they're gonna handle that for you if you're in the continental United States. And then you've got tax. To you, which means after 416 days, you're now in the money rather than paying for a, uh, ice for a dollar per day 
never mind the fact that you still got to pay for the cooler. So it, it really beats the cooler out in the math any way you slice it. Now let's look at this compared to other brands. You may say, well, Jamie, this is an import, man. I'm pulling for you. I want to see you, I want to see you promote stuff that's good, but this is an import, man. What about the Dometic? What about the Dan Foss compressor? What are you talking about, man? You're going to get me in this? When you got the Dometic, you got the Dan Foss compressor? Well, let's talk about that because I got, I've got one Dometic right now and I've had two and I'll tell you exactly what happened with the first one. I paid the premium price. I went down that road. I believed in the Dan Foss compressor. And I'll tell you what happened. After four years, the thing crapped out on me. And if you go right now and look at a 45 quart uh, Dan Foss or uh, Dometic, it's going to run you over $1,000. And it's not going to come with a three year warranty on the compressor, which this does. So, Set Power sat down in some boardroom somewhere and said, How do we kick these other brands' butt? even though they're gonna look at us and say, well, I don't know, man. Well, they figured it out. They're gonna give you a three year warranty on the compressor, a year on everything else. And with the promo code, they're getting you into this thing for just over 400 bucks. I just don't see how you can lose. In fact, if you look at a three year warranty on the compressor and add up three years, you know, the days involved is to be, be about 1,095 days. That's $1,095 in ice you'd have bought if you'd have bought a cooler. If you went with uh, another brand, the one that you feel like might be the, the, the safer choice, mine went out on me. That's a direct empirical experience and they're gonna cost you over $1,000. So I just, they figured out a way to make it so you can't lose with these things. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and uh, put the promo code in the notes for you so you can pull the trigger on this thing right away. It's gonna take you to their website. You already have the promo code in when you click it because that's how it's set up. Shipping's gonna be free and you're gonna have yourself something with a three-year warranty, durable. I love the way this lid will come off and go on the other side. If that meets your purposes, we talked about not letting the, the vents be covered up. Go ahead, if you're in the market for a fridge, click that link and pick up one of these set power refrigerators and I think you're gonna be really glad you did and when we meet out on the road, I wanna hear about it. Go into my Facebook group, Enigmatic Nomadics Facebook, and uh, post your picture of it and tell us about your, your uh, results with it. Over time, tell us about your results. Speaking of the Facebook group, Set Power wants one of these things to go out as a free gift. They wanna get these things out in the community, this new line that they've got out. So we're gonna give one of these away. And in order to be eligible, there's three things for you. We need to have you a subscriber on the channel that you're watching right now a uh, follow on Instagram, which there's a link down in the description to uh, go to Instagram and sign up there. I post pictures of, of uh, both, uh, there's a picture of the fridge right now on there, but uh, my shenanigans, you know, the, the, the average fare of a guy living in a school bus, you're gonna see all that, that jazz. And then join the Enigmatic Pneumatics Facebook group. And that way you'll be in a community of folks that are either living the traveling lifestyle or about to set out into the traveling lifestyle. And you can both give advice that you've gained over the years of doing it, or you can ask advice from other people. And we also give updates for the van build and, and other events, giveaways. So join the Facebook group, Enigmatic Pneumatics, the Instagram and the channel here. And then I'm gonna go in a week from now and I'm gonna pick somebody from the Facebook group. And then I'm gonna go back and see what their uh, subscription on uh, the YouTube channel and Instagram, and then we're gonna get it out to you. We're gonna get one of these out to you. And the only thing I ask when you win is that you, when you get it, take it out of the box and post a picture of it up on Facebook. And if you're not too bashful, be in the picture. I wanna see you with it. So with that, thanks for watching. Here you go for 2022, the new Set Power RV series, 45 and 60. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next upload. See ya. Yeah, you could put some Reflectix around it with some shipping tape. Does it? Mine, mine do. Yeah. Mine doesn't. Mine does not have a drain, man. 
there's gonna be a little fuse inside of here. So I'm gonna have to replace that fuse. Uh, and we'll see how many amps this thing draws when it's under load and that'll tell me what size fuse I would recommend I can't really can I recommend this can I recommend you cut the cord you got a nice little light right here you got a nice little light in the refrigerator right here really? yeah that's, a, that's something that I hate that I find that's awesome the light is cool. and it's and they split the difference so you get a light on both sides 